in the depths of the Indian Ocean, where the sun's rays barely touch the surface, lies the forlorn Tromelin Island. This sandy stretch, unassumingly named the Isle of Sand, holds within its history the harrowing tale of those who, in 1761, found themselves marooned on its desolate shores. The memories of those harrowing days on Tromelin Island, etched into my very being, compel me to share the tale of our desperate journey, a relentless struggle against nature's cruelty that unfolded over fifteen long years. As I stand on this distant shore, the phantom sounds of crashing waves and the haunting cries of seabirds transport me back to the Isle of Sand, where endurance, resilience, and tragedy marked each passing day. Our odyssey commenced on July 31, 1761, the night of our ill-fated journey, cloaked in an impenetrable darkness over the Indian Ocean and set the stage for a series of choices that would plunge us into the abyss of despair. Captain John de Lafargue, burdened by contradictory maps, faced the ominous decision of slowing down to navigate safely or hurtling forward into the unknown. The relentless winds, reaching up to twenty knots, whispered warnings of impending danger. As fate would have it, the captain chose the latter, a choice that condemned us to Tromelin's treacherous reefs. The destructive collision between our vessel, Lutile, and the submerged reef tore through the hull like a voracious predator, swallowing the ship and crew into a nightmarish reality. In the chaotic aftermath, the desperate scramble for survival ensued, with some of our fellow crew members lost to the relentless embrace of the unforgiving sea. With the first light of morning, Tromelin Island unveiled its desolate, barren landscape, a volcanic relic defiantly standing against the vastness of the Indian Ocean. The Isle of Sand, an apt moniker for this purgatorial realm, offered no reprieve from the unrelenting sun, its highest point mere feet above the relentless waves. We, the remnants of a shattered crew, found ourselves marooned on this forsaken outpost, leaving behind the haunting echoes of those swallowed by the abyss. The mantle of leadership, once proudly worn by Captain Jean, now fell upon the capable shoulders of First Lieutenant Barthelemy Castellan Duvernet. Survival became an immediate imperative as we salvaged what we could from the wreckage, fashioning makeshift shelters against the elements that would soon become our relentless adversaries. However, in our haste to secure tangible necessities, a critical oversight emerged. Freshwater, the elixir of life, was neglected in those initial desperate days. The division between the crew and the Malagasy persisted like an unspoken wound, manifesting in a segregated camp and an unequal distribution of essential resources. Barthelemy's audacious decision to construct a new ship, the Providence carved from the remnants of Lutile, cast an uncertain shadow over our collective fate. The promise of rescue, embodied by the departure of the Providence on September 27th, left us, the surviving Malagasy, with nothing but a distant glimmer of hope amidst the harsh reality of our desolation. As the relentless years marched on, taking their toll on both the island and our dwindling numbers, the Isle of Sand bore witness to our relentless struggle for existence. Adaptation became our silent ally as we navigated the challenges of a diet reliant on seabirds and turtles, weathering violent storms that battered our flimsy shelters and enduring the scorching tropical sun that offered no respite. In the corridors of bureaucracy and political apathy, Bartholomew's tireless efforts to secure our rescue seemed an exercise in futility. The passing of years brought a reduction in our numbers from a hopeful 60 to a mere 15, the echoes of lost comrades reverberating through the desolate landscape. It appeared the world beyond Tromelin had consigned us to oblivion. Then, on November 29, 1776, a date etched in the annals of our improbable survival, the Dauphine, a French warship under the command of Jacques-Marie Boudin de Tromelin, emerged on the horizon. As the sails billowed with the winds of salvation, a mere seven Malagasy women stood as the last testament to our enduring spirit, clad in clothes meticulously fashioned from seabird feathers. 
The elation of impending rescue mingled with the profound melancholy of realizing how many we had lost to the merciless clutches of Trumelin's embrace. This turning point marked not just our physical rescue, but a symbolic liberation from the clutches of despair. The dolphin, our deliverer, sailed us away from the Isle of Sand, leaving behind a desolate realm where we had etched our story of survival. As we embarked on a journey beyond Trommelin's shores, we carried with us the weight of 15 years, a testament to human resilience, camaraderie, and the unyielding determination to defy the odds. The journey beyond Trommelin's shores marked the end of our 15-year saga. We faced an unexpected choice to return to the familiar shores of Madagascar or embrace the uncertainties of newfound freedom. As the dolphin sailed away, we ventured into uncharted territories, leaving behind the Isle of Sand, a silent witness to our trials. In the years that followed, Tromelin Island underwent a transformation, renamed to honor our rescuer, Captain Jacques. Archaeological expeditions, initiated in 2006, uncovered remnants of survival a shipwreck, a kitchen with copper bowls, handmade spoons, and artifacts that spoke of our resourcefulness. Yet, amid the artifacts and remnants, the intimate details of those 15 years remained elusive. As your survivor, I delve into the nuances of daily life on Tromelin. The scalding sun beating down relentlessly, the unyielding winds, and the stark reality of survival. The Isle of Sand was not merely a backdrop to our story, but an antagonist, testing our mettle at every turn. We scoured the reefs for sustenance, fashioned tools from the wreckage, and built shelters against the elements. The Malagasy, removed from their inland origins, grappled with the challenges of ocean living. The taboo of consuming turtles yielded to the gnawing pangs of hunger, as seabirds became our primary source of sustenance. Each death, whether from sickness or malnutrition, left an indelible mark on our collective consciousness. We adapted, we endured, and we faced the profound isolation of our existence. Despite Bartholomew's relentless efforts for our rescue, the world beyond Trommelin seemed indifferent. The failure of the 1775 rescue attempt compounded our despair, a stark reminder that our cries for help fell on deaf ears Yet, the story took a turn in 1776, as the Dauphin's arrival heralded our redemption. The survivors, weathered and weary, stepped onto the ship, leaving behind the Isle of Sand for the first time in 15 years. The Dauphin sailed towards hope, carrying the last remnants of a resilient group that defied nature's relentless assault. Women, draped in clothes crafted from seabird feathers, stood as a testament to our resourcefulness and tenacity. The tale of Tromelin Island, woven with threads of tragedy and survival, unfolded over generations. The Isle of Sand, now named Tromelin Island, stands as a testament to our endurance. Archaeological expeditions continue to unveil the remnants of our struggle, shedding light on a chapter of history written in the sand and etched in the hearts of those who endured. As I recount this survivor's story, I invite you to delve into the untold details, the makeshift tools, the camaraderie forged in adversity, and the unspoken moments of resilience that defined our existence. The Isle of Sand, a desolate outpost in the vastness of the Indian Ocean, witnessed a human drama, a story of survival against insurmountable odds. As the waves echo the distant past, the haunting cries of seabirds still resonate, carrying the spirit of those who, against all odds, clung to life on the Isle of Sand. Our unlikely fortress, our unforgiving home, 